This video was inspired by the following Reddit post where the user was trying to create a variable chamfer. I'm going to go through three methods here. Let's take a look at using a fillet as suggested by Alf Mir. Begin a fillet command. Select the top edge of the box. Under radius type, select variable. At this point, if we hover over the edge, we can see a red dot. Click to place a control point. Once you do that, you should see an arrow. I'm going to put down another control point here. If you drag on the arrow, you can create a fillet that has a varying radius. At this point, it still looks very round and not like the chamfer that we need. In order to create a chamfered look, you can drag on this double arrow here to reduce the tangency weight to its minimum. Let's inspect the curvature of the face we have created. Go to Inspect, Curvature Map Analysis, and select the box. We can see that the edges are not completely sharp, so keep this in mind when using this method. For the next method, I'm going to attempt to create a cut. I'm going to start with an already chamfered box. We need a sketch plane that perpendicularly bisects this face. It may not be easy to use construction planes here, so I'm going to create a surface to serve as a sketch plane. Start a sketch on the front plane. Begin the line tool. and step to the midpoint of the chamfer edge. Draw a perpendicular line to that edge. Activate the Surface tab. Go to Create, Extrude. And extrude this line symmetrically to an arbitrary distance. Start a sketch on the bottom side of this surface. We need the sketch to be tangent to these two faces. Go to Create, Project Include, Intersect. Select these two faces. These two lines represent the intersection between the current sketch plane and the two faces. Click on Look at in the sketch palette to look normal to the sketch plane. Hide both the box and the surface body. Let's create a series of tangent arcs. Set a tangent relation between the last arc and the projected line. Bring back the body.
go to modify split body select the box as a body to split and select the sketch as a splitting tool We can hide or remove the split body. If we perform a curvature analysis, we can see that this gives a very consistent flat chamfer along the path. For the third method, I'm going to use surfaces. This method allows you to have more creative control in how the variable chamfer looks, but it does come at the cost of surface quality. Again, we will start with an already chamfered box. I have prepared a sketch on the top face of the box. This sketch represents the edge of the chamfer while looking from the top. Go to modify face. Select the top face of the box to split. Select the sketch line as a splitting tool. I have prepared another sketch which represents how the chamfer looks from the right. Use this to split the right face. So with this method, you can be more creative in controlling how the chamfer looks from the top and the side. Activate the Surface tab. Control select these faces and press the delete key. The solid body becomes a hollow surface body with an opening. Make sure that the surface tab is still active. Go to create loft. Remove the chain selection option so that we can select edges individually. Select this chain of edges as a first profile. In order to create a sharp edge, set the continuity option to connected. Click on the plus sign to add another profile. Select this chain of edges as a second profile. Click on the select box for rails and select these two edges. We want the surface to transition smoothly to the rest of the chamfer, so set the continuity option to tangent. To improve the look of the chamfer, Try to line up these control lines to be parallel to the front plane. Go to Modify, Stitch. Stitch all these surface bodies into a solid. Let's inspect the curvature. You can see that there is some curvature in these areas between the lofted surface and the rest of the box. 
In order to create a nice chamfer appearance, you want to try your best to straighten out these regions. To do that, we can introduce more rails. Let's roll the timeline back to before the loft. I've created an offset plane that roughly lines up with the problematic region. Create a sketch on this plane. Go to Create, Project Include, Intersect. Select these two edges. These two points represent the points at which the sketch plane intersects with the two edges. Draw a line to join these two points. Let's roll the timeline forward. Right click on the loft and edit the feature. Let's make use of the analysis tab in the loft command and turn on a curvature map. This allows us to inspect the curvature while working on the loft. Go back into the Feature tab. Click on the plus sign for the rail and add the new rail. You can see that this really helps in removing the curvature between the lofted surface and the flat faces of the box. The same process can be carried out to add another rail in this region. <laughs> 